Labor Law, an introduction to the law of work is an introductory principles textbook to the concepts that govern the world of work. I've been joined by renowned author Joellen Riley Munton, who will give us a deeper insight into this book and how it will support your teaching. Joellen, perhaps you can start by introducing yourself. Hi, oh, yes, I'm Joellen Riley Munton. Um, I'm a professor of law at the University of Technology, Sydney. Um, I've been here about two years after quite a long career um, at the University of Sydney, uh, also teaching labour law, uh, and before that, a little while at the University of New South Wales as well. Thanks, Joellen. Uh, that was great. Um, I'll jump into the questions now and start with the approach of the text. Labour law takes a unique approach, focusing on the underlying principles and concepts that shape labour law rather than the historical technical detail. Can you explain why you chose to take this approach? I've been taking this approach um, in my own teaching of labour law. Uh, since about 2005 when I needed to reorganise my own course uh, when the work choices law, they had just been uh, passed by Parliament and they were already subject to a constitutional challenge. So you can imagine that it's very difficult to plan a course around teaching students the technical rules that they will be applying immediately in practice if you don't really know uh, exactly what those rules are. And also if you've just seen a, a very significant shake up of the subject, which did happen with the work choices laws. And at that time, uh, I was teaching at both masters and undergraduate level. And in my masters course, I had some incredibly serious talent in the room. I had people who were senior people with what was at the time called the, the employment advocate, I had senior people with the Maritime Union. I had senior people with the uh, Australian uh, Competition um, and Consumer Commission. All people who uh, needed to understand our labour law systems and understood that there had been this very significant change. Um, so I needed to rethink the way I taught the subject. And I found that the most valuable way of restructuring it in that environment was to think more broadly thematically about the, the general architecture of our system and what it attempts to achieve, you know, what its underlying policies are, um, how policy and politics affects our understanding of labour law. And once I devised a course to suit that particular environment, I found it was actually very useful going forward. You, you'll remember that we also, not long after that, we had another change with the Fair Work legislation. Um, so the, the notion that <laughs> this area of law will change regularly uh, is well understood in, in labour law. And so it does make sense to teach the subject from a, a broad um, conceptual perspective so that students understand the principles and learn the skills that they need to adapt as they go. Because once they come out into practice, you know, who knows uh, what the particular rules will be that face them. Uh, my next question is in regards to the structure of the text. Part of the text unique approach is its non-linear structure. How does this support the teaching of labour law? Uh, most of the courses that I've taught have uh, been focused on a set of seminars. Um, semesterisation tends to mean that that's the way we teach uh, all of our law courses now. And so it made sense to me to structure the, the uh, the book to match a set of seminars that could be run and they not don't necessarily need to be run in exactly the same order that I've set them out in the book. Um, in fact, the ultimate uh, order of chapters in the book has been very much influenced by the very useful comments I had from 
two reviewers who looked at the initial manuscript and one of them in particular made some suggestions for which chapters should go before which other chapters. So different people will take different views on which is the best order for dealing with topics to put together this big jigsaw puzzle that is labour law. Um, and the book is written in a way that each chapter can stand alone and be used in whichever order uh, a particular you know, lecturer, seminar leader would like to use it. There are discussion questions at the end of each chapter. How do these support students learning? Well, these uh, discussion um, questions at the end are intended to uh, provoke students into stopping for a moment and reflecting on what they've read, critically reflecting and thinking about what the implications are um, of the material in the topics, you know, particularly for current challenges. Um, so they don't necessarily have, you know, a right answer. They are in fact for critical reflection. And some of them may in fact uh, be useful if um, people are, are looking for essay topics or seminar discussion topics to, to use in their teaching as well. Finally, my last question. This book also comes with a wealth of supplementary lecture resources. Can you explain what these are and how they support the teaching of labour law? What the instructor resource manual is, is uh, a set of resources for each chapter that uh, sets out some icebreaker questions, which are, are questions that um, I tend to use to commence a class, sort of open up a topic by first linking the topic to students' own current experience, to help engage them to see the relevance of what they're learning. Uh, there are also short answer questions that can be used for sort of quizzes and um, class discussions. Um, there are sample essay questions for each topic for, for those people who would set essays as part of their assessment. There are worked problem examples. Um, some are you know, quite complex ones with no, no real right answer that are designed to really encourage uh, sort of robust discussion in classes about some of the difficulties in these areas. And the whole program is there to assist particularly those people who might be coming relatively newly to teaching labour law. Now, of course, many people who teach in this area will have their own uh, bank of resources that they will want to use. So there's obviously uh, no obligation to use these ideas, but they're there to sort of stimulate fresh ideas and to assist anyone who's coming to the subject uh, relatively newly.